kill me, you can try. Arguably throughout the history of League of Legends, Yasuo is the most hated champion in the game. When it comes to forum posts, Reddit, and YouTube comments, there seems to be no other champion that gets as much hate as Yasuo. Sure, other champions are broken, and currently at the time there might be champions that are more overpowered, but why Yasuo? Have you ever thought of the implications of why he receives so much hate, and why so many people say his kit is as broken as it is? Well, that's what we're going to tackle today. Why is he always so scary on the enemy team, but why when he's on your team he goes 0 and 10? Where did all his hate come from? How did his kit get to be where it is today based on his development? And why is he still in this state without receiving a rework? Does his hate have legitimate grounds and reasons for it? Well today, that's exactly what we're going to find out. I hope you stick around because this is the history of Yasuo the Unforgiven. Yasuo was first released on patch 3.15 on December 13th of 2013. In the lore, Yasuo is from Ionia. As a child, Yasuo often believed what the others in his village said of him. On his best days, his very existence was an error in judgment. On the worst, he was a mistake that could never be undone. Yasuo was originally designed by Riot Certainly T, who in the past has maybe designed some champions that people just aren't exactly fond of. A few to note would be Darius, Yasuo, and Zoe. Yasuo's development had these three core ideas. Dash, Strike, and Parry. The idea is that Certainly T wanted a swordsman, but it needed to be more samurai themed like you might see in an anime, rather than something like the current version of Master Yi. At the time, Master Yi was already the Ionian Swordsman of League of Legends, so Yasuo needed to be different. Yasuo's design of dash, strike, and parry were supposed to be the core of his kit, and you can see how it's come to fruition with his three basic abilities. When it comes to his development, he did go through several iterations, as every champion does, but he did not receive as many changes as you might think. One of the biggest things that originally was attached to his ultimate was his dash, where essentially it became a really long version of his Q. This didn't feel that great originally because they wanted to make sure that Yasuo constantly was dashing, striking, and parrying, and if it was on his ultimate and it was one really big long dash, then maybe it didn't feel so great to be the Yasuo player. The ideas for his dash and his strike needed to be quick. They wanted this champion to be a champion about acceleration, sudden changes in movement, and to be a very quick champion. Not necessarily based on movement speed or velocity, such that a Hecarim would be, but the champion needed to be a very agile swordsman. This is when they came up with the idea to attach his E to not only champions, but minions and monsters. That way in lane he can use a lot of different dashes and he can use them to his effectiveness for both escaping, moving around, and dodging skill shots. And it wouldn't be Yasuo and it wouldn't be hating Yasuo if we didn't talk about his wind wall. During his pre-release in alpha and beta stages, this wind wall did go through several different changes. One of the iterations of his wind wall happened to be where the skill shot that hit it, if it was an explosive skill shot, such like a Ziggs Q, would actually explode in front of it, almost like it hit the wall and stopped. Rather than the wall being there to soak up the ability and make it disappear, it was there to just absorb it, almost like the way Braum's shield works, but a little bit different. On paper and during the first round of practicing, it seemed great, and probably the way the ability would end up being. In terms of counterplay and playing against it, it seems the most logical. You throw the skill shot and it doesn't completely absorb it, but hey, it hits a wall and stops right there. The issue is that as the Yasuo player and on Yasuo's team, this did not feel good to play with at all. In certain situations as the Yasuo player, you may end up killing your team because you detonate the bomb too early. But the ability doesn't seem very fair or fun to play against, and especially on a high damage fighter like this, wouldn't it be more fair to give this to a support, i.e. like Braum? Well, there might be somebody that you can blame. During the development process for Yasuo, Riot wanted to get the opinion of several pro players during this process and wanted to see what they thought about this type of ability. Some kind of missile blocking or missile rejecting ability and what type of champions this could be on. There were some votes for supports, i.e. being something like a Braum shield, 
but it was Hotshot GG himself who said this would be really cool on a melee AD carry. So if there's potentially anybody that you could throw flame at, maybe don't even throw it at Riot themselves, maybe just report Hotshot. I think that it is very important to look at a champion's development cycle and its pre-development to see exactly how and why Riot came to the decisions and conclusions that they did. Remember that history and hindsight will always be 2020 because it's already happened and you can look into the future essentially. But if we take a look at Yasuo's development and we see if Riot was able to reach their original goals and if certainly T was able to reach the champion that he really wanted to make, then maybe it's just a success rather than a failure. Immediately following his release, Yasuo became a favorite amongst many players across the world. Having a kit that was extremely unique to anything seen previously, he quickly saw some competitive limelight in EU and NA Challenger of 2014. He had an interesting and wildly overloaded kit which led to many professional players finding immediate ways to make him work and utilize him in coordinated play. Over the course of Season 4, he met a lot of backlash from the overall player base. Many players on forums were simply unhappy happy and felt that it was unfair to play against Yasuo, despite understanding the difficulty that his kit required for players to overcome. The argument put forth by the other player's perspective is that Yasuo has no real weaknesses other than the player playing him. It's not that he has any counterplay, it's that the counterplay is that the other guy has to mess up. His win wall and excessive mobility are great examples of why many players felt very frustrated playing against him and still do to this day. This left the general player base feeling frustrated frustrated playing in lane versus him despite how rewarding it really did feel to play as him. He had a volatile yet god tier kit as a melee AD carry which made him oppressive versus mid lane mages while being relatively underwhelming trying to go toe to toe with top lane bruisers. Um, for the Yasuo, um, I've actually out of like 15 games I played against Zion Sparks and I lost every single one of them and scrimmages. Riot soon noticed the frustration of players and started keeping a close watch on Yasuo's performance in all levels of play. Initially, their main goals in mind were to smooth out his gameplay, but as players became more accustomed to playing Yasuo by beginning to master his kit, Riot realized that Yasuo was very strong at what he did and when played to maximum effectiveness, it felt as if he had no counterplay. This led to a series of nerfs throughout Season 4, mostly to his mobility and passive shield. Over time, as so many nerfs came through for Yasuo in Season 4, eventually the champion started to feel no longer like the same champion we knew and loved to hate. He was one of the best champions in the game, but now without great competitive success and falling off in solo queue in general, General play, he was simply a hard to play champion with lackluster numbers. This caused frustration for the first time for Yasuo players rather than the players playing against him. This... Holy shit! Oh my god, Yasuo! Oh my god, he's just so useless. In my mind, it's like, how does this champ exist? This is an important part of the story because this would eventually spark the seesaw effect that has been Yasuo's balance his entire time as a League of Legends champion. He's either way too good and obnoxious to play against, or he sucks. It really wasn't until the preseason of 5 that Yasuo finally received some well-deserved love. He received some buffs to his Q, his move speed, and his passive. These reasonably small yet very impactful buffs were some of the reasons that Yasuo was able to come back into the sights of players, and he started once again becoming a very popular solo queue pick. And I pull this out, I'm on the escape. Oh god, I might be dead here. Oh god. I'm good, I'm good baby, I'm good, just watch and learn. Mastermind. Hey, that's the boy! Let's go! Let's go! This is the time where huge league stars like Faker and Bjergsen started playing Yasuo once again. Not only on ladder and in their solo queue games, but also in competitive games, like the NALCS Summer Playoffs. 
Many gameplay videos and guides started appearing to showcase the champion and how effective he can be when pursued towards mastery. And for a while, he was once again back in this state, people rushing Static Shiv, maxing their E and going into an Infinity Edge, Trinity Force, Bloodthirster, and a Bork. This was the build and it was standard at the time, and he was a great champion for mid lane. And as we approached Season 6, this kinda seemed to be the way Yasuo would work. He was a strong champion, and maybe too strong, and might receive some nerfs, but he really wasn't that oppressive when it comes to being the best champion in the game like he was in Season 4. Well, that was about to change. Ah, we've arrived at the part of the story where everybody gets to just really, really hate Yasuo and really hate Riot's balance team, and that's patch 5.22. Patch 5.22 is when Yasuo became one of the most played champions on the ranked ladder and arguably became the single best champion in the game. This patch held the massive crit item rework, changing items like Trinity Force, Phantom Dancer, and Static Shiv pretty drastically. This meant that Yasuo started changing up his build path and playstyle significantly. Instead of always going mid lane with building a Static Shiv into Infinity Edge, Yasuo started seeing more play in the top lane as somewhat of a bruiser, building an item like Phantom Dancer, which had a newly added damage reduction. This meant that those bruisers who really gave Yasuo a hard time before, such as Darius, Renekton, and Riven, were no longer that big of an issue. He wasn't just a melee mid lane AD carry, he was now a top lane bruiser and split pusher. This was also the patch, to be fair, that did have Warlord's Bloodlust. If you remember, I have no idea how this got out of PvE, but this was the keystone that just let you heal by critting constantly so Trindamir jungle could clear forever at level 1, he never took any damage. You know, it's the, it's the preseason, right? We'll, we'll, we'll give you a pass on that one. It was the preseason, but what the hell? Come on. Dear God, why did this crit mastery make it out of PBE? The crit mastery is so broken that I can't even correctly evaluate champions or items because of it. It also broke specific champions like Yasuo and Trindamir to being like super top tier. Personally, I would have, I only had the idea to like, you know, increase the cooldown by at least five times, if not 10 times, if not, 15 times. Within the next 6 months to 1 year, people started experimenting more on builds that Yasuo could take as the new crit item changes allowed him to be much more flexible in his build path than he had ever been previously. Rolling into Season 6, we started seeing a new era of Yasuo, almost a new archetype that players started to hate more than ever. This was the era of Tank Yasuo. Builds back then for Tank Suo started popping up where he would go Frozen Mallet, Guardian Angel, and a Sunfire Cape. He could even go Iceborne Gauntlet at the time, which is really ridiculous, but it was so broken at the time it kind of worked. He could sustain up given by Warlord's Bloodlust or Grasp of the Undying. He could go Fervor if he wanted more damage. He became an unkillable threat with the power to last through any fight. All of this kind of started by Arcadata, who just took Yasuo top lane with Sunfire Cape and Grasp, and if you remember even at the time there was a Korean Akali tank Akali build that popped up. It was randomly just the most OP Akali build. This was kind of in the season 6 tank meta which in my opinion was the worst tank meta that ever existed but it definitely was no exception for champions like Yasuo and Akali who were melee bruiser champions who were just building full tank. On patch 611 Riot did in fact remove crit chance on Trinity Force but Yasuo was still able to keep up with many of the bruisers that populated top lane at the time. Demolishing turrets and slicing up enemies with no problem. I think one of the most interesting parts of this timeline, however, is that despite the insane power that Yasuo held in solo queue, he did see fairly little competitive play as his weaknesses to hard crowd control and leaving a team without a strong AP damage dealer did really keep him from being a good pick against prevalent meta champions at the time, such as Azir, Victor, Poppy, and even Tank Echo top lane. It's always been easy just to camp Yasuo, so it's so interesting to see that competitive players, despite in the past when arguably players were much worse, weren't able to play around him, and even when he was very prevalent in solo queue, he was not able to ever jump back to that popularity that he used to be at. Immortals are dominating! Oh my goodness. This Yasuo with the bruiser build and grasp just lives forever. However, Yasuo's massive rise in popularity and success in ranked solo queue was no joke, and it was brought to the attention by many people, including popular League of Legends news organization, Rift Herald. On August 3rd of 2016, an article was released saying that Yasuo will likely be nerfed very soon. In the article, the lead champion designer Riot Meddler had stated on Yasuo that he is looking a bit out of line, will likely 
trim them down in power sometime in the next couple of patches. Not sure what yet. One of the first things we'll look at is whether tank builds are inappropriately effective. Riot would go through and follow up with this statement by Medler, and on patch 6.18, Yasuo received a nerf to his attack speed in his ultimate. The ultimate was a big nerf because they made it the bonus armor penetration that Last Breath gives you only applies to critical strikes. This doesn't matter if you build the normal Yasuo build or what you're supposed to build with 100% crit, but if you're not building any crit, then you're not gonna be able to get that bonus armor pen. This would then force Yasuo players to make a decision of whether they're going to pursue the two expensive crit items and get the full effectiveness of their ultimate, or to commit to a more bruiser build where he is more durable, but isn't going to be able to deal the same damage. Some of the most notable Yasuo players throughout his history include guys like Yasuo or Mo and Arcadata. It's really cool to see how these guys were able to spawn their careers in League of Legends content simply by starting off as just good Yasuo players, especially somebody like Mo. For Mo, he started off as just another Yasuo main, and he even said himself that he was stuck in Diamond for quite a bit before pushing for higher elo. However, it wouldn't just be by becoming the highest rated Yasuo player in NA that he would get his time in the spotlight. It would be one fateful day in which Faker, the god himself, came to NA for worlds and played solo queue. Mo would end up solo killing Faker several times this game, and the once awkward, massive keyboard clicking and spamming teenager from New York City would eventually become one of the biggest names in all of League of Legends content. As for Arcadata, he is one of the most played and most dedicated Yasuo mains. His popularity has come mostly from him being known as one of the cleanest Yasuo players. He probably didn't grow to be as popular as he deserves, simply because, in part, he streams in his native language most of the time, which is French. But it definitely would not be a video about about Yasuo without mentioning him, because he has been massive for the community for streaming, montages, and guides. Throughout his time as a League of Legends champion, Yasuo has received more hate than anybody else, which should come as no surprise. Something interesting to note is that Yasuo may have also received extra hate from the community due to something that Dopa or Apto once said. There's a very popular video that has over a million views on YouTube and that did make the front page of the League of Legends Reddit where Dopa or Apto, after reaching rank 1, wanted to talk about some of his thoughts and one thing that he mentioned in the video is that he thinks Yasuo is broken. It's incredibly interesting to note, however, that despite everything that Yasuo has gone through and his rise and fall of popularity in solo queue as well as his astronomically high ban rates, he still sees almost no competitive play after season 5, despite honestly having a kit that isn't that bad for pro play. For split pushing, and that would be the go-to pick. Oh, he might oh, do, it. do it! Now, fun little fact here, they asked SK Telecom what skins they would want. Yeah! And who said he wants a Yasuo skin? However, when it comes to Yasuo, interestingly, he only sees any real competitive play as a specific counter pick to Nar. This specific matchup is great for Yasuo, and the reason why they pick it competitively is Nar is a very high priority pick, and when Yasuo win walls a Nar boomerang, it never goes back to Nar, meaning it goes on a really long cooldown. What's also nice about this matchup is that if you do get ahead, you become unstoppable as you can kind of just run the Nar down. Aside from that, Yas has popped up a bit here and there in the mid lane ever since season 5, but it's nothing truly worth noting. What's funny to me is that everyone tends to believe that a lot of the hate Yasuo gets is also just because of the people who play him. It's not just the fact that his win wall is annoying or unfun to play against, it's also just the Yasuo on your team that ints your promos. This does also have to do with the fact that Yasuo wants to play aggressive and he's heavily rewarded for playing aggressive. The champion's laning phase is so strong that if he's at least even or sometimes even a little bit behind, he almost always wins the 1v1, so if he can shove in and play aggro, he's heavily rewarded. When it comes to concluding the history of Yasuo, it's fair to say that yes, the champion is overloaded, somewhat broken, and if League were a 1v1 fighting game, he would most likely be the best champion in the game. But it's no doubt that League is not a 1v1 game, and it's not just about the 1v1. League isn't just about being able to outlane your opponent, and if you play Yasuo, you know how the bane of your existence typically isn't actually the enemy laner, but the enemy jungler. But what's next for Yasuo? Could he be changed in some way to make him more pleasing to play against and much less of a tilt champion? Or is he doomed forever? Well, I don't necessarily think that given his history, his current state is in that bad of a spot. Sure, a Conqueror is kinda bonkers on him and maybe deserves some tuning, but even then his one tricks haven't hit the top of Challenger, he doesn't seem to have insane win rates, and even veteran Yasuo players still may struggle at times, even though he's arguably stronger right now than he has been in the last several months. 
He is a very unique champion, being designed as a melee AD carry, and his win wall does completely shut down almost an entire class or subclass of champions. To this day, however, he's still a fan favorite. He's one of the most fun champions to play, and he's one of the most skill expressive champions. As a whole package, Yasuo the Unforgiven is an extremely rewarding champion, as the time you put into him can directly correlate with how much you're able to display your true form. Despite everything that he has gone through, with bugs, nerfs, buffs, and a lot of bitching, it seems like for the time being, he's here to stay. My conclusion based on all of the research and looking through his timeline is that, for the most part, he is currently pretty in line with where he should be. Of course, certain classes of champions, yes, that's you Lux mains, might permaban him, and that's perfectly okay too. But remember this, even though Yasuo may not always be your favorite champion to play, he will always Hasaki to your heart. Unless he goes 0 and 10, in which case you should flame him. Yasuo, what the actual f-